Radio Engineering Graphics and Design Learners, welcome to the How to Hack Your Pet series only on How to EGD, where I take you step by step through the various components and requirements of the Engineering Graphics and Design Civil Pet Task for 2023. Now, leading up to today, I've spoken through the design brief with you, we've looked at the research. We've even done the two freehand concepts and we're now going to look at how to select your best freehand solution. And uh, just to help you guide you throughout this process, I've set up this pay setter that you can download in the description below. But it takes you through all the different phases and next term we're really going to be zooming in on the actual working drawings that is a requirement of your pad. But for today we're zooming in on selecting of your best solution after you have completed your freehand concept. So to do that, we have to go back to our PAT document. On page 13, number four speaks about selecting the best solution that demonstrates an in-depth understanding of the scenario within the context of the design brief. So the purpose of this video is to help you understand how does this look like in your PAT task? How do you select the best solution that demonstrates to us as teachers that you have an in-depth understanding of the scenario and the context of this design brief. And so uh, I'm going to show you exactly how this looks and actually show you an example of, two of, of what is expected. So this is on a separate page, all right? This must be A3 landscape, all right? A3, an orientated landscape. You have to compare and evaluate. So compare and evaluate the two freehand solutions that you've just drawn. Okay, how to do that? You're going to create a table, right, with a minimum of six relevant descriptive criteria that will facilitate measurable comparisons. Okay, the descriptive criteria that they refer to here as measurable comparisons that you're going to find within your list of specifications and constraints. So, if we think here, we all two of your Freehand designs are going to have a kitchen, for instance. So you can't have a one-word descriptor and just say, I'm comparing kitchen, the kitchens in all of this. You have to have a bit more detail on that. Does your kitchen meet the square meterage requirement? Or does your kitchen have easy access to the serving counters, for instance? Those are descriptive kind of criteria that you'll use. Let's talk about the drop-off area. That needs to cater for two vehicles next to each other, must be under the roof, and easy access to the rotating doors and the swinging doors. So that is a descriptive criteria that you can actually go measure your two concepts against. Another example would be, for instance, the conference rooms, the two smaller ones. They have to have that stacking door in between them so that they open up for a larger uh, room. That's a descriptive criteria specifying your conference room. And so you can come up with a table that lists six relevant, those kinds of descriptive criteria, not just a single word, uh, facilitating the measurable comparison. So once you have your six criteria, and really try and zoom in here on the six key criteria. I mean, there's others that's less prominent, but try and find six prominent, relevant descriptive criteria. Some of them I've already mentioned, and then you're going to list that. I'll show you how to do that. Then you have to create and apply a simple self-explanatory rating scale to score each solution against each, each criterion. Okay, so a rating scale, that would be, it needs to be simple, it needs to be self-explanatory, and it must be a rating scale, of course, to score each solution against each criteria. So for instance, you can now, let's say your first descriptive criteria is the kitchen access to the serving counter, for instance, okay? So you can give that a rating as 5 out of 5 for excellent, 4 out of 5 for very good, 3 out of 5 for good, and then 2 out of 5 for poor, for instance. And now if you give a rating there, it's very self-explanatory what that rating is that you've given the specific descriptive criteria. So just give that some thought. I'll give you examples of how this can look. And you have to then score each of the concepts to this criteria. So for the one you might give a 5 out of 5, and for the second concept, you might give a 3 out of 5. And so that will really tell you that the first concept is superior to the second one in that specific instance. 
Then you have to further justify each of these scores. So you have to have a motivation, a positive and negative motivation why you scored each one as you did, describing the positive or negative aspects of each solution against each other. Okay, I'm going to look at this now, take time. Complete the process by writing comprehensive summary, giving reasons for your selected solution. So remember, once you have your, got your six criteria, you're going to come up to a total, and then that total is going to indicate to you which one of these concepts scored the highest. And based on that, you'll select your final solution. Now, once you've done that, of course, then you have to have a summary giving the reasons why you selected the specific solution. And that summary must include if you had any late changes that were made or not made. All right. So if you look at that, that compares to your checklist. And do not neglect this. It's an important part of the actual pack. So here's the grading for it. You're selecting the best free and solution. Did you come up with a suitable table? And was it created for the selection process? Two out of two. Minimum of six relevant and descriptive criteria that will facilitate the measurable comparisons. Two out of two. Simple rating scale created and used to score each solution against each criteria. Two out of two. Each score justified by describing the positive and negative aspects, two out of two, and your summary in the end, two out of two. Okay, here is an example. Um, it is in a different language, but the idea is what we're looking for. So it's a neatly framed page with a header. That header number corresponds to your actual checklist. Then you have your scale, your grading scale. So this learner just did zero for did not meet any of the requirements and five for excellent and had the others in between, okay? Then they've listed the criteria on the left-hand side, the six criteria, and this is worded. It's not a single word. It must be a phrase, okay? Describing the criteria that's measurable. And then concept one, concept two, and the score that each one. So for the first criteria, concept one scored three, concept two only scored, uh, scored four, so they won in that instance. Next one, Concept 1 scored 2, concept 2 scored 5. So based on that, here's the motivations, the positives and negatives on the other side. Based on that, very easily anybody can view and see, okay, concept 2 scored 27, concept 1 only 23. So concept 2 here is the winner and will be the one that the learner proceeds with. And then at the end will be your actual summary that just emphasizes your conclusion here. So it's a very simple page, but it is critical for you to get this done correctly. And you can use a similar format. Of course, you can use a different grading scale. You might have an easier one. I would really want you to have this end result here, nice and bold, stand out so that it's clearly visible. The moment that you look at this, maybe even put a nice big red around here to show which one was the winner. Um, of the two concepts. All right, and then make sure each page has your name on, date, page number, and title. All right, that's an overview of how to select the best free and solution. There's more videos coming up quite soon, so keep an eye out for them. Thank you so much for watching, and please remember, you can become a member of How to EGD by clicking on that join button, so do so if you wish. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn.